So this is never going to be an easy video for me to make, but since I've made so many videos about the UCAT now and more and more people are doing their test and getting their results, we should talk about UCAT scores. Hey everyone and welcome back to the YouTube channel. If you don't know me, my name is Emil and I'm a first year medical student studying at Monash University in Melbourne, Australia. And on this channel, we help students trying to get into undergraduate medicine in Australia. So to make the information a little easier to digest, this video will be separated into two main parts. Firstly, I'll talk about what score you might actually need to get an interview to get into medicine. And then secondly, I'll talk about what you can do now that you have your UCAT score to increase your chances of getting an interview later down the line. All right, so let's get into the big question that I'm sure a lot of you guys are wondering about right now, which is what UCAT score do you need to get an interview for medicine? And there are sort of two answers to this. The first one, which is the short incorrect answer, is that you need a UCAT score above the 80 percentile which was 2710 in 2019 and 2780 in 2020 to have some chance of getting an interview to medicine somewhere in Australia. However the longer answer is that there are a lot of other factors that go into whether you'll get an interview to medicine and in this video I'll go over the three main factors that I think you guys should keep in mind. Firstly though I'd like to say to anyone who might have done well on the UCAT congratulations give yourself a pat on the back it's not an easy test by any means. However to anyone who might be thinking thinking that they haven't done that well, that's okay. There are a lot of other pathways into medicine that don't involve the UCAT and you can also take other action like taking a gap year or transferring from one course into medicine that can help you to get into the course. And if you're someone who thinks that everyone around them has done well except for them, do try to remember survivorship bias, which is that someone who does well on the UCAT is far more likely to share their good score than someone who did poorly is. And because of that, keep in mind that for every person there is in the 90th percentile and above, there are nine other people who scored lower than the 90th percentile. So for that reason, try not to let it get you down and doing poorly on the UCAT is by no means the end of your dream to study medicine. So now let's get into some of the other factors that you might want to consider to get a better idea of whether you'll have a chance of getting an interview to medicine. The first of these factors is your ATAR or your year 12 mark. Pretty much all of the medical schools in Australia do use your year 12 scores in some point of their admissions process so it will definitely affect whether you get an interview or not. In relation to your UCAT and how it affects it, if you have a high ATAR, say 99.5 or above, this will mean that you can compensate for a lower UCAT score, for example, in the 80th percentile range. However, if you have a lower ATAR score in relation to medicine, this will mean that you can't necessarily compensate as much for a lower UCAT score and you might need a UCAT score in the 90th percentile or above. So the second other factor that you should definitely be considering is where you are applying to. In medicine, there definitely is a big bias towards students of your own state. So what that means is if there were two people with the exact same score, but one was from New South Wales and one was from Victoria, and they were both applying to Monash University, the student from Victoria would almost certainly get chosen rather than the New South Wales student. So because of this, you need to keep in mind where you're applying because you'll definitely have a better chance of getting into universities within your own state or territory. The other thing to keep in mind is that between unis, there will be differences in what scores are actually required to get an interview. For example, with Monash University, since it's the only undergraduate medical school in Victoria, the competition will naturally be a little bit higher than in Sydney where there are three or four undergraduate medical schools. Now, the third and final factor which I'll talk about which can affect whether you'll get an interview or not is how many universities you're actually applying to. The general gist of this is that if you apply to more unis, you'll just naturally have a higher chance of getting an interview somewhere in Australia. I highly recommend that you don't put all your eggs in one basket by applying to the same university and that you diversify by applying to other states as well. In regards to all of these factors as a whole, in general, I do think that even if your UCAT score is kind of close to what you think might be the cutoff, I still recommend that you try applying to as many universities as you can because you never know, you might get surprised and get an interview and then you'll have a chance of getting into medicine. Before I get into the second part of this video, which will be about what you can do now that you have your UCAT score to increase your chance of getting an interview, I'd really appreciate if you could drop a like on the video or subscribe to the channel and I'd also like to let you all know that I've recently launched my weekly email newsletter so I'd really appreciate if you could sign up to that down in the description box below if you want to hear more from me about the things I'm doing and how I manage my time. So the first piece of advice I have for maximizing your chances of getting an interview is to now focus on your year 12 or ATAR result. If you feel by chance that you haven't done too well on the UCAT, the ATAR is the thing that you can now focus on to possibly compensate for not doing as well. There is still a lot of time before your 
your end of year exams. And often a lot of your ATAR mark is really decided by your end of year exams rather than by your SACs or the assessments that you've done up to this point. So my message in saying this is that even if you might've done maybe poorly in your SACs before, there's still plenty of time to be doing well on your end of year exams and to get an ATAR that will help compensate for your UCAT score. The second piece of advice I have is that you should definitely apply to as many medical schools in Australia as possible. I know I mentioned this earlier in this video, but I'll give you some more reasons as to why it can be useful. Firstly, you never actually know how your interview will go. And if you do poorly on the interview, then you might actually get rejected from the medical school, even if you thought you had a really good ATAR and a really good UCAT score. The second thing is that applying interstate, especially if you have a high UCAT score, can mean that you get interviews as practice for the interview for the medical school you want to get into. In my case, I was actually fairly lucky because I had interviews from maybe three or four universities before my Monash University interview. So by the time I actually got to the Monash interview, I had already done maybe three or four MMIs and panel interviews, and I had a much better idea of what the setup was like and what worked well for me in the interview process. Both of these reasons actually mean that applying interstate can mean that you get an advantage in applying to the university in your state as well. The third piece of advice I have is that if you think you did especially poorly on your UCAT, then you can consider applying for a gap year or transferring from one course into medicine. Especially since for most people, you might have the pressure of year 12 alongside the UCAT when you're doing it for the first time. It can be a lot of pressure and it's not necessarily a test that's easy to do well on. If you feel like you do much better on the UCAT, if you had less pressure and more time to prepare, it would definitely be a good experience to go on a gap year or to start a uni course and then transfer over to medicine with the UCAT. Taking a gap year can be a very good option for other reasons as well, such as gaining experience or earning money before you head into university life. Now that you've done your UCAT, take some time to process what's happened and maybe relax by watching this video of my day in the life during the med school holidays.